We got threats that if we didn't put the chicken on the regular menu that they would uh, thought a riot and make sure that we shut down, so we listened to the people. When we actually opened restaurant Mark Foggione, I didn't serve chicken at all because my dad was famous for bringing free-range chicken to America. So I didn't want to be known for chicken, trying to like run away from it, and it ended up coming back and basically smacking me in the face. We've got our chicken ready to go. We basically just got a pot of water and a pot of chicken stock. All right, the first thing we're gonna do before we even touch the chicken is potatoes go into the water. A little bit of fresh rosemary, a bay leaf, some salt. So now while we're taking apart this beautiful bird, the potatoes are cooking. Sometimes when you open it out of the package, you'll have some moisture, water, blood, all that kind of stuff. We'll just pat it dry. Now we're gonna set up a tray for our parts. Every single thing on here can do something, all right? So here we're gonna bend at the joint, pops right out, all right? There's no giant cleavers are having to get through this, right? We're gonna find the backbone or the breastplate. Now this is kind of the tricky part. You wanna feel for the bone. All you're really doing is shaving down the bone. And then once you've gotten to here, pop it. Get the oyster out of there, same thing, pop it. We now have half the chicken taken apart. For the exact same concept, we're just gonna do it on the other side. So we're just gonna keep following this, keep popping. All right, so now you get left. So far we've got wings, which we'll use for sauce. Bones, which we'll use for stock. And then again, you don't need to get crazy here. You just kind of find the joint. Then we're just gonna debone the thigh. Now this side is ready to go. The skin is left completely intact on both sides of the bird, because that's gonna be our crispy skin when we actually get it in the pan and do the chicken under the brick. All right, so this next step is, is very optional. All right, with something in the restaurant, we do it just to make it look kind of a little fancy. It's called Frenching. We basically just make an incision here all the way down to the bone, kind of find the joint. I like to leave the joint on. The next part, we're literally just gonna drop the drumsticks into a pot that we have chicken stock, some aromatics, and while we're getting everything else ready, this can kind of be happening like the potatoes. All we do is add salt. Kind of a cool little chef trick, we do this the night before. So the salt actually pulls out any uh, extra water or moisture, which helps get that crispy skin when we get it in the pan. Now on the skin, the only thing we put is salt. So now on the flesh side, fresh black pepper, and then very simply, it's about give or take a half a lemon for every chicken. Okay, now this will go back onto the tray, skin side up. So now we've got our chicken that's uh, been curing overnight, and obviously this is brick chicken, so you're gonna need a brick. And people ask me all the time, is it a special brick? And it's just a brick. You have a very, very hot pan, right? Chicken goes in skin side, and then the brick goes into the pan cold. The flesh side never really touches the hot surface, and what happens is very hot from underneath, slowly, slowly getting warm. That's how you get this beautiful, crispy skin and this very, very, very juicy chicken. All right, it's literally as simple as that. All right, so I like to use a, a neutral oil because this is gonna end up being like pan drippings. You wanna make sure you really coat the bottom of the pan, okay? Some chefs will tell you you should never bring anything to a smoking point. Or sometimes you need a smoking point, sometimes you don't. For this particular dish, getting it to a smoking point actually works better. Now at this point, you just want to wait and you want to watch for a nice golden crust around the side. And you can see it's starting to form already. I'm not doing anything, I'm just letting it do its thing. Simple things, done right, a little bit of patience. All right, so now we're gonna go into the oven. Chicken's in there, you got 20, 25 minutes to kill anyway. We're just gonna make a very, very quick caper shallot butter. And then the next part is actually something that I think a lot of people have fun with. You're gonna take your potatoes, you find whatever you can find in your house, and you literally just... So now we've got our smashed potato. We're gonna get a pan hot on the back. All right, same type of thing. We just wanna kinda of let this chill for a bit. All right, so now we're gonna check on our bird. So 
So we're about 80%. You can see this is cooked from the bottom up, so it's still got a little pink. But what's going to happen now is it's basically going to rest. I'm just going to kiss the pan, and you guys see this kind of glassy skin. Now this is going to become the sauce with the capers and the shallots and a little bit of butter. And then same thing, we'll add a little bit of butter for these potatoes, a couple sprigs of rosemary, a little salt, a little pepper. So I'm gonna actually add the chicken back to this. And if you guys see that liquid that's left in there. And if you notice, I didn't baste it or do anything to the skin because you want that crispy kind of crunch. I'm just gonna add a little bit of oil. You're gonna take our braised legs right into the sauce. The whole time we've been doing all this, I've had a little bit of water on the stove. And you just take a little bit of broccoli rub and you're just gonna dip it right in the water. Like this is the color that we're looking for now. So the butter is basically turning brown. Right? In the kitchen we call it noisette because it kind of smells like hazelnut. The shallots are getting nice and crispy. The capers are starting to release their liquid. And we'll finish this with a little bit of chopped parsley. And then we just add a little bit of crispy shallots. You can buy them, you can make them. Let's just add a little bit of texture in there. And then when you bring it to the table, you've got this beautiful kind of bubbling butter and the smells go crazy and everybody looks at it for a couple minutes before you even start to dig in on it. And at the end of the day, there's nothing crazy in here, right? You know, I have some dishes that take like four months to make, like curing and hanging and fermenting and like blah, blah, blah. And then there's this stupid dish and it's all people want to eat. And this dish makes people very, very happy. <laughs>